In this video with Dr. John Gray, you will discover how a woman can know if a man is secretly falling in love with her. Hi, I'm Antje Boyd, founder and creator of the Magnetize Your Man Method and make sure to like, comment and subscribe to this channel so you get more videos like this in your inbox. So let's go ahead and dive right in. Well, a lot of guys will be in love with you and not say it. And that's a very common thing. Mm, often there's an old song, you'll know it in the kiss. <laughs> you can feel that the, there's something really, really special in the kiss. And if you're feeling it, he's feeling it. However, he won't tell you. And just feeling love doesn't mean it's a guaranteed relationship. Okay, I love ice cream. Then. <laughs> so what? That doesn't mean anything. It's action. It's bonding. It's over time. It's wanting to be selfless and be of service to her. But how do you know it? You know it through his actions. You know it through his behaviors. Men often don't say, I love you when they do. Now, why do they not say it? That's an important thing to know. Because most men have been in a relationship where they have said, I love you. And then they end the relationship and the woman looks so hurt. And she says, but you said you love me. Because <laughs> our, our culture is such that if you say, I love you, it means I want to marry you. I want to be with you forever and I'll never leave you. And you can always depend on me. That's marriage, okay? That's a commitment. That's not, not love is a part of that, okay? But just because I love you, that's just a feeling and it's a good feeling and it's an important feeling, but it doesn't mean I'm making a commitment to you. It doesn't mean that I've realized we've, our souls have connected and you're the one, you're the one I wanna share my life with. That is not in that meaning. So if he says, I love you, he doesn't wanna hurt you because he might, he's not yet sure that he will always love you. And you can't know, how can you know I'll always love you anyway? First of all, you know, and my relationship is I love you, I'll always love you. How do you know? How do you know the future? You can't know the future. And so, so on a very practical, logical level, you can't know the future. But here's the sweet thing we've been talking about, which is when your heart is open, when your buttons have been pushed, when you keep coming back to love, when he pulls away and he comes back and each time you're no longer a downer, but you're an upper and you experience this shared experience, something happens. You have a mental intimacy, emotional intimacy, physical intimacy. Something happens when all three are there and that's spiritual intimacy. That's where you connect with your soul. And your soul will tell you, this is the person you're destined to be with. Or you're being fooled. Some people just think this is the person I'm, so, I'm to be with because you don't have all those three levels of intimacy. This is your soulmate. And you know, my belief is before this birth, you souls got together and said, we're gonna be together and we're gonna find each other. And we know how to find each other on an unconscious level. It's all programmed in. There's certain parts of our destiny. and you cannot follow your heart. You keep missing your partner. They'll come back. And I have a story for that, which is, you know, my sweetheart, Bonnie in heaven, we were soulmates. We're coming into this life to learn to grow together. And that's what I think a soulmate is. It's somebody who has the potential to push all your buttons, but also you have the potential with them to work through your stuff and come back to more love, coming back to more love. Why? Because all your buttons have to do with this person is expressing through their feminine, as a man, through her femininity, the parts of me that I want to integrate into my masculinity. And for her, it's learning to embrace the masculine side of her, which is expressed to this guy to, in, to trust it. And to trust masculinity means to not demand perfection, but to know it's doing its best. You know, so many women are so possessed with, I have to be perfect, everything has to be done, everything has to be fixed. And then you see your husband over there saying, to manana, manana, tomorrow, who cares about today? Let's enjoy. Men are so good at that. And, and a woman has to find her masculine side, okay? Embrace that masculine side that says, hey, I don't have to do it all. I can do a lot. I don't have to do it all. I don't have to do it perfectly. So that's loving a man. He will give you all the buttons, push all the buttons inside of you. To love him is to love a part of you that wants to relax that doesn't want to do it all, that doesn't want to be perfect. And that's just one example. But we tend to be attracted to each other to embrace parts of ourself that we need to embrace in order to grow and become more whole. So my little story with Bonnie 
Now, Bonnie passed two years ago, so I'm talking in past. Uh, she's the love of my life, my soulmate for 40 years. I first took care of her and I didn't even know who she was. She was married. I was the assistant to Maharishi of the Transcendental Meditation Movement. She was on one of our teacher training programs, discovered she was pregnant. So the Maharishi said, make sure she gets everything she needs. So I took responsibility of her. I never met her. I got her cottage cheese. She wanted foods. I got her foods. I got a comfortable chair for her, but I never met this lady. Then after I stopped being a monk, I came out into the world. I had all this, I was this roving Casanova guy. I saw her and it, we discovered, oh, you're the woman I took care of. Well, she was divorced. I had the little baby that she was pregnant with was in her life now, plus another little baby. So she had two little children and we met, we made love. It was like magic. We felt like soulmates, but I wasn't ready yet. I was still Casanova. I was making love with lots of women. And so she said, John, I wanted to marry her because I kept being with other women. I came back to her and I tried to get rid of the other women. Some women just wouldn't go away. <laughs> but anyway, I wasn't yet ready. And she said to me, she, I said, look, I'm not going to see any other women. I'm just going to be with you. I love you. You're the one. She said, John, I don't think you're ready. And so we broke up. This was my soulmate. We broke up. I ended up marrying one of these women who just kept coming back to me again and again and again. And I was fooled by that. You know, she, this other woman, my first wife, Barbara, I married her, not Bonnie. I married Barbara and Barbara had money. She'd be my assistant. She'd help me get my career together. She was doing all these things for me. What's to say no to? It was great. I was in role reversal. I was depending on her rather than like Bonnie, Bonnie wanted a husband to take care of her and be there for her with little children. She needed support and I'm off playing around. She said, you're not ready. So I got married to Barbara. We were in complete role reversal. She was like the workaholic and I just want to enjoy, but she was helping me. She helped me. That was great. I always grateful to that, but she lost attraction to me, fell in love with another guy. That was devastating to me because I we were teaching a workshop on relationships. How could I teach a relationship workshop if I'm getting a divorce? And it was my livelihood. So it was a bang, bang, both my male side, couldn't make money, female side, I've just been rejected, devastating, brought up unresolved issues from childhood, took nine months to heal all that, opened my heart, very happy at that point. I happened to call Bonnie and I heard the bells in heaven. I heard the music of the heaven when we got together. I said, no, I'm the one. You're the one. <laughs> and within a month, we were married. Uh, and then we practicing birth control. We got a baby. That baby had been waiting a long time to come through us. So you never know. It's like destiny is a real thing, but we have to be ready for it. And I just wasn't ready at those two other times. One time I was a monk and she was married. Another time uh, I just wasn't mature enough to re be ready for a committed relationship. And I really wasn't, you know, I needed to sort of make money, have a job, be successful. Then I could come and I feel like I have something of value to give her. And a lot of men don't commit because they never feel I have something of value for you. Part of that could be they don't, they're the wrong guy. They don't have a job. They don't have a sense of self-sufficiency. They can't be happy without you. They're too needy. That's the wrong guy. The right guy wants to make you happy. He's not so needy about it. And you test that out by not giving him everything. Go slow with the whole thing. Don't give more than you're getting and put off getting everything. So let it grow slow and he will desire more. There's one thing, a little, little tidbit here because you don't want to sabotage it by, by saying no to sex with him because sex is this big deal with men and men think, oh, everybody's getting laid and whatever. The reality is only 10% of men are getting laid all the time <laughs> on those tender things and whatever. The same guys, you know, they look good. The women all say yes to them and the other guys, they're not getting laid. But still there's this pressure on guys that, you know, if I'm not getting laid, I, I'm a, a loser. So when he wants to have sex with you, you say, oh, it feels so good. I can't wait to do it as well. I just need to go slow. Why do you need to go slow? I just need it, you know, for all of me to wake up and it's going to be so good. Can't wait. So lead him on with that. And of course, if it never happens for you, don't have sex, but you have to be true to yourself there. Don't have sex to please a man. Only when he's succeeded in pleasing you mentally, emotionally, physically, do you open up that way with him.